Aloha, it's Robert Stelick with Blue Planet Surf. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Foil Strong Box. It's a new product we came out with um, that I'm going to talk a little bit about why we designed it, how it's made, and then Jeff's going to walk us through the installation process. So we have this available now for do-it-yourselfers that want to retrofit their board to work with both a tuttle mount and a plate mount together. Originally when we started um, making foil boards we just put in a tuttle box and then later uh, a lot of people asked about the plate mount wanting both so we started installing both a tuttle mount and then the plate mount US boxes next to it and it's like a multi-step installation process you have to put high density foam around it and all the different steps uh, made it kind of a complicated installation and also not as strong as it could be if it's all uh, in one piece so one of the nice things about a tuttle installation is that it connects the top layer of the board and the bottom layer all together it's kind of like an I-beam super strong so what we did is we basically made a tuttle box with a bigger plate on the bottom carbon fiber plate and then the US boxes are installed and glassed into that plate so everything's glassed together and, and one piece construction has also a carbon stringer one running all the way through and then these tubes that connect to the tuttle and then everything is encased in a high density PVC foam that's CNC cut so it has the right shape and, and everything is in a one piece construction so it's super solid everything connects with the base and the top of the board and um, Jeff is going to walk us through the installation process okay so next to me here I have Jeff Chang he's been doing a lot of installations for our shop and we all kind of started out on stand-up paddle boards that we retrofitted for foiling. So it's a good way to get started. Now, now we have the foil strong box for do-it-yourselfers. And Jeff's going to walk us through the installation process. It's a time lapse, so it's kind of quick. You want to talk a little bit about it first? Sure. So um, it goes really quick, and we skip over some of the details. So you're, we're going to have detailed instructions on the bottom. And also, if you have any further questions, you can always email the shop. Uh, but it's important when you do this installation to make sure you create that I-beam between the top and the bottom of the board. We, we go all the way through the board and we glass the top and bottom because the forces of the foil are really strong so you need a really good solid installation um, just from all the torque. More than a fin box, more than anything else on the board, it's going to apply forces so you need to do it properly. Yeah, I mean that's one thing that we've seen a lot like when if you just install the US boxes like a regular fin box it'll just rip the glass yeah. around it or just rip it out of the foam. It needs to be much stronger than a regular fin box because basically the foil carries your whole body weight plus then some yep. versus yep. a fin that just has a little bit of sideways pressure but not, not nearly the amount of force of a foil. So keep that mm -hmm. in mind. It has to be definitely solid yep. insulation. Okay, so Jeff's gonna walk us through it right now. Okay, first you need to measure where you wanna put the box. So you measure it and then mark the stringer and then Mark out the box, make sure it's nice and square with the stringer. Drill some pilot holes for your jigsaw and then make sure you get a nice long blade for the jigsaw so you can cut all the way through the board. And you want the hole nice and tight to the box. Then you need to cut the pad away at the deck a little more than the size of the hole. So that's where your glass is going to go and overlap onto the board so that the box is adhered and kind of like an I-beam with the board. Put the box in flush to the bottom and mark the top, cut the box so it's going to fit. And then here you see I'm putting a piece of wood and some plastic to cover the deck. And then you put the Gorilla Glue, okay, both on the box and the board, stick it in there. Water activates it, so you need to spray water when you do that. And then um, make sure the box is in there nice and flush, make sure it's square, check the plumb, and then when the Gorilla Glue sets up, it kind of fills all the voids and oozes out, so you cut away the excess Gorilla Glue. Here you see cutting away the excess Gorilla Glue, it oozes out quite a bit. Okay, so you've got a nice flat surface, and then you, to put the, before you lay it up, you need to sand away the paint. Uh, so you get it, all that paint away, and get it down to the bare glass, so then you're going to get a better bond. Clean it with denatured alcohol, then you cut the glass to the size of the holes. And then I also cut a, uh, I used three layers of carbon and then cut a piece of four ounce so that I lay that up first and then when you cover that with the four ounce, the epoxy doesn't ooze down into the holes because it has a tighter weave than the carbon. So get everything, I'm rounding the edges there you see so that it's nice and round and then 
you lay everything up and then after I lay it up I put a piece of plastic on the top that makes a tighter layup and then also smooths the surface for sanding later just get less sanding okay when it's all dry you can sand it get it ready for the hot coat I leave the tape on so I don't burn through and uh, burn the paint off and make ugly white marks so you get it as smooth as you can uh, hot coat's going to fill in some of the imperfections so you don't have to worry about that and here you see we're working on the deck now and the glue from the deck pad is kind of a nuisance so you got to grind it off with a grinder and so I do that and then I finish it with a sander and then again the same process clean with denatured alcohol three layers of carbon and then the plastic over that again that helps your sanding later less bumps and uh, imperfections and it also gets it nice and tight to the board not so thick of a layup it's almost like vacuum bag yeah almost it's kind of same effect sand it get it ready we put a little the hot coat isn't quite as uh, important on the deck here you see the bottom we're putting on the hot coat you got to make it nice and thick then when it's dry you can drill for your holes then you can router it out using a trim router it has a guide on the bottom and a cutting edge above that so you get it perfect to the hole that's a special router bit you need um, and also tilt the router a little bit so it kind of uh, makes an angle at the very edge then once you're done with that um, you drill where the tuttle box goes and then I put some washers there before I put the pad down so when you screw the screw down it doesn't damage the bore and then you're all done Thanks, Jeff. When you put the box into the board, it's already you already cut it to the right thickness, right to the thickness of the board. Right, you -cut. yeah, you make it exactly so it's the right thickness, and you want to double check that if it doesn't come out perfect, I would you want to take it back and sand it or recut it so it's perfect and flush on both sides. Is there like a minimum thickness that you need to have for the tuttle insulation? Yeah, that, well, the tuttle is it's like three and a quarter is the minimum you need. So if it's less than that, you might have to. I've made bumps on the decks, little humps to kind of compensate for that. Okay. And the other thing is important is make sure you wear your safety equipment, the, the glasses. I use earmuffs also, and then your respirator or um, face mask. That's super important. Make sure you got all that stuff. So I know um, when you use epoxy to install inserts, sometimes it get, can get really hot and melt the foam and so on. Is, is that the reason why you're using the Gorilla Glue? Yeah, the Gorilla Glue is actually really good. It doesn't heat up. That's one advantage. It's slower to set up, so you get time to make sure the box is all plumb and square. And then it oozes and fills in all the voids and actually oozes out the cracks. So you, you got a nice tight bond and also uh, no place the water can get in. So Gorilla Glue works really well. Okay, Jeff, thanks for explaining the installation process. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, just go down below and leave a comment. We'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. And, uh, and yeah, any questions that weren't covered, we also have more information at foilstrongbox.com. All right, see you on the water. Thanks for watching. Aloha. Aloha.